Hi guys, Dr. Cruz here. This is a uh, elementary statistics and we're going to discuss mean, median, and mode. All right, given a simple uh, group of data values like 4, 6, 5, 5, 5, 6, 4, um, just I like to tell myself a little story. Maybe these are measurements of something that, you know, looks like it's about five pounds. Maybe that's a, a house cat or a rabbit. Make up your own story. So let's go with the cats. All right, maybe I grabbed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats and I weighed them. And I came up with these seven weights. All right, so I'm going to calculate the mean, median, and mode of my sample. All right, first of all, mode's the easiest one. That's the one you see the most, the value you see the most. And in this data set, I see four twice, I see six twice, but I see five three times. So five is the winner on that one. Now. Be aware that, you know, even though we're used to seeing just one mode, you can have two modes. I mean, for example, if I, uh, if I threw another four right here, well, then I'd have three fours and three fives. I'd have two modes. The mode could be four and five. You could have three modes. You could have four modes. Also be aware, you could have no mode. If my data said instead of this, if it said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, none of those numbers occur any more than the other. So that, that data set, one through seven, would have no mode. So be aware, even though we're used to seeing one mode, you can have two, you could have three, you could have none, all right? In this instance, we have a mode of five. Five is the one we see the most. The mode is a pretty good, I mean, it's a good way of looking at your data just real quickly and seeing kind of what your data looks like. It looks to me like, you know, since most of the cats weighed five pounds, that's probably a good uh, estimate for the weight of a cat. All right, median, that's the guy in the middle. All right, median, what does the middle cat weigh? So it's the middle value. Remember to line them up from low to high first. So if we line them up from low to high, four, four, five, 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 six, six, from lowest weight cat to highest weight cat, once we line them up from low to high, we just kind of count our way in to the middle. So that's the outside, N1, N2, and then we end up at the middle of five. So the middle value, the middle cat, weighed five pounds. This is also another good way of uh, uh, getting a quick look at your data. If I just line them up low to high and look at the middle value, the median, I can say, oh, it looks like my data, it looks like most of these cats weigh about five pounds. That's just a real quick way of getting a look at your data. And then finally, mean is the one that, that most people use, all right? They average, mean stands for average. They average the data values, which just means add them all up and divide by how many there are. All right? In this case, if I add all these values up, they add up at 35, and there's seven values here, so I divide by seven, and I again get the number five. So five is our mode, five is also our median, and five is our mean, all right? We have a nice symmetrical data set. If you look at it here in order from low to high, See, we got these fives in the middle, and then for every low value of four, we have a high value of six. It's kind of like they cancel out. So it's kind of like we got some fives in the middle, and this four is low, but that six is high, so they cancel out, and that four cancels that six. This is a nice symmetrical uh, distribution. And when you have a nice symmetrical distribution, all three values will be the same. Some notation real quick before we look, move on. If you're talking about the sample, average. We're going to call it the sample mean. All right. We're not going to say average in statistics. We're going to say mean. If you're talking about the sample mean, you use the symbol that looks like this, a lowercase x with a bar over it. And that's what we say is x bar. And if you're talking about the population average, now we're not going to call it average. We're going to say population mean. Well, then we use this Greek symbol mu. This is how you say it, mu. This is how you spell it. And this is how you need to draw it, okay? It kind of looks like a U with a tail down the left. That stands for the population mean. Okay, back to our data. They all turned out to be five. In a symmetrical distribution, all right, in a normal distribution, your mean, median, and mode are very close to each other. In our example, they all turned out to be five. So it would look like this. The uh, weight that came up the most was five. That's the mode. That's your max of your curve here. So the mode is five, but so is the median, so is the mean. So if you can kind of imagine three lines here just kind of sitting on top of each other, all three of these lines are right in the middle. That's because our distribution is symmetrical. 
for every low value we have, we have another high value that kind of cancels it out. All right, let's look at a uh, messier uh, set of data values. So I'm just taking a quick glance at this, and it looks like five, I see sixes, I see fives, I see sevens. It looks like these are all five, six, seven kind of weights or whatever. Make up your own story. So I'm trying to think of something that weighs five or six or seven pounds. Maybe it's a, a, a rabbit or something like that. You can make up your own story. All right, so I'm going to uh, do some measurements on my data set here. I'm going to calculate the mean, the average. They add up to 88.2, and there's eight values here. So 88.2 divided by 8 is 11.03. All right, now I'm going to line them up and look for the middle guy, that middle rabbit. What's the middle rabbit way? Well, lined up from low to high. I have a tie in the middle here because I'm counting in this, these two, then these two, then these two. These two are in the middle. Well, if you got a tie for the middle when you're calculating median, you got to add them up and divide by two. You got to average them. So my median is 6.75. Now, notice that these are not the same number, they're not even close. All right, my average says that an average rabbit weighs 11 pounds. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, look up here, five, six, seven. They all look like five, six, or seven pounds. This should be something like five or six or seven pounds, just from looking at the data. And our median does say that. It says, hey, the rabbit in the middle, he weighs six, almost seven pounds. All right? So this is kind of what we expected. We expected like a five or a six or a seven number. <clears throat> look at your mode. The weight of the rabbit that occurred most often was 6.6 .6 pounds. Now, the median and the mode, they're fairly close together. And when you have a uh, normally distributed set of data values, all three values will be close together. But look at this. That's an 11-pound rabbit. If I tell, you know, if I publish a journal article or something, and I say my sample mean was 11.03, therefore a rabbit's average weight is 11 pounds, People are going to you say, no, that's not true. Let's go back and look at your data. Look at all these five-pound rabbits and six-pound rabbits and seven-pound rabbits. How can you say that an average rabbit weighs 11 pounds when most of your rabbits weren't even close to that? All right? So something's happened to kind of screw up my average, to screw up my mean. All right? Now, what has happened? Look at this guy right here, a 41.9-pound rabbit. Now, think about it. All right? Think about how weird that is. Think about how scary a rabbit that would be. My rabbits are supposed to weigh five pounds or six pounds or seven pounds, somewhere in here. Look at where all the data is falling. Five, six, seven, that's pretty normal for a rabbit. This is not normal. This is abnormal. We call that an outlier. Outliers screw up the mean, all right? That's why the average, the mean, is so far off from the mode and the median because this outlier is pulling the average way too high. See, we were expecting something like six, almost seven pounds. This is a lot higher. This higher number is making my average higher. It's pulling that number to the right. Instead of a six or seven number, it pulled it all the way to the right to 11. Here's kind of what it looks like on the graph, all right? Now, remember the mode? That's the answer that happened the most. That's the rabbit that occurred. That's the rabbit's weight that occurred the most. That was at 6.6 .6 pounds. I just have this number down here for reference. If I put a 6 right there, then it'd be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, like a ruler. All right, we're just using these numbers for reference. So if my mode is 6.6 .6 pounds, and I know that the mode is the, the maximum or the peak of this curve, if the mode is 6.6 .6 pounds, well, that's just going to be slightly to the right of 6. So it's this dashed line right here. Now, my median is just a little bit higher than that. It's 6.75 pounds, so it would be just a little bit further to the right. And then way over here, if I go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, at 11.03, my average is way over here to the right. That's just not right. All three of these values should be fairly close to the middle, to the peak, to the maximum of that curve. Why is this pulled so far to the right? Because of that 41.9 pound rabbit, all right? If you can imagine a rabbit standing out here and grabbing the curve right there like a rope and pulling it to the right, as that outlier pulls the curve to the right, it's gonna pull the mean way to the right and it's
that's going to pull the median just a little bit to the right. And the mode's still going to be here under the curve, all right, under the peak of the curve. The mode's still going to be under the max. We would like the median and the mean to be there as well. But when you have an outlier, a really large outlier, it's going to pull the median a little bit to the right, and it's going to pull the mean to the right. And this is a signal that you do have an outlier when your average is a lot higher or a lot lower than you expect, you can expect that you have an outlier in your data. All right, so the, the really heavy rabbit is skewing our graph to the right. It's pulling the rope to the right. It's pulling the mean to the right, and it's pulling the median a little bit to the right. Here's an example of if we had instead, instead of the 41.9 pound rabbit, if we had a really light rabbit, like a one pound rabbit, it would pull it the other way, all right? Uh, my average, my, my, my median, my mode, excuse me, my median and mode, they'd still be about six pounds, almost seven pounds. But my mean would be a lot lower than six or seven pounds because that one pound rabbit is standing out here pulling the curve to the left. So when it pulls it to the left, it pulls the mean way to the left. It pulls the median just a little bit to the left, all right? And the mode stays under the peak of the curve. The mode stays under the maximum because that's the most common response. This is a skewed left example. You have an outlier pulling your data life, uh, left. Okay, well, what do we do if our data is screwed up by an outlier? Well, one thing we can do is what's called trimming the mean. We can trim the mean to remove the outliers. We kind of want to get rid of that 41.9 because he's messing up our data because our average was off. That 41-pound rabbit that pulled our average, our mean, way to the right, well, if we trim that 41-pound rabbit's data off, our average, our mean, will be closer to the median and mode. All right, it'll go back, it'll kind of normalize the data. The data is a little out, excuse me, the data is a little abnormal now because of that outlier, that 41 pound rabbit. But if I trim, if I get rid of the 41 pounder, the outlier, and then I do mean, median, and mode on the rest of it, our data will normalize and those numbers will be much, much closer together. So for example, on this set of data here, I have 20 values, all right? Maybe these are the uh, weights of a dog. I don't know, I see lots of 30s, lots of 40s. So I'm saying maybe the average weight of a dog is, you know, 30 or 40 pounds. That's just looking at this without even calculating. Now, if I want to do a 5% trimmed mean, I want to cut off 5% from the top and 5% from the bottom. Now, first of all, I have to figure out how many values that is. All right, if I have 20 values, I'm going to calculate 5% of 20. What's 5% of 20? Well, 5% times 20 is 1. That means take one value from the top, one value from the bottom, and just erase them or mark them out, and then recalculate your values. All right, so instead of doing an average with 20 values, adding these all up and dividing by 20, I'm going to mark out the 80-pound dog. I'm going to mark out the 14-pound dog. And now I'm going to add up these 18 values in the middle and divide by 18 to get a new trimmed mean, a 5% trimmed mean. I trimmed 5% off the bottom. I trimmed 5% off the top. And I'm going to do an average, a mean, of what's left over, these 18 values in the middle. And here's kind of what it happens. You can see the effect of trimming the data. Here's the original data set over here, and here's the trimmed data set. So on the original data set, we had 20 values. It added up to 719. We had an average of 35.95. The middle value, the middle dog, the middle dog weighed 32.5 pounds. The most common weight was a 20 pound dog. All right, now these are kind of spread out. All right, but these should be closer together. So something's up here and it's probably the fault of the outlier. I noticed that my mean, my average is the biggest number. If it's the biggest number, that means it's bigger. It's off to the right on the curve. It looks like I got an outlier pulling my data to the right. All right, it's probably, probably this 80 pound dog is probably messing up my data. I probably have a big outlier pulling my data to the right. So I trim it, all right? I trim that data up there. I got rid of the 14 pound dog and the 80 pound dog. So now they add up, those 18 values that are left over, they add up to 625, I divide by 18, and yeah, my average has dropped 
to 34.72. Well, that's a little better, all right? The median is still 32.5, it didn't change. And the mode is still 20, that didn't change. So is it better? Yes. I trimmed the data, I kind of cleaned up the data. Sometimes it's called scrubbing the data. And my data got better, but you know, they're still kind of far apart. I mean, to me, I would make an argument for maybe doing it again, you know? Because I still got an 80 pound dog here that's kind of pulling my data to the right. It's so big, it's pulling my average, my mean to the right. I'd make an argument for, you know, uh, trimming, <clears throat> trimming this 20 and trimming that 80 and doing it one more time and see if your data, you know, lines up better. That's some things that people do to kind of make their data look better and to get a better picture of what's actually happening in the data. All right, guys, that's all I got for mean, median, mode, and uh, trimmed data set.